So in this tutorial, we're going to look at manipulating entire objects. And by entire objects, what I mean is entire meshes. Okay, so these are transformations or manipulations that we're going to do on entire meshes as opposed to part of meshes, which we'll cover in a later tutorial. So let's create a mesh first of all. So we can create basic perimeters by going into the Create menu. And we're going to focus on polygon perimeters here. So you've got spheres, cylinders. You can explore these yourself. I'm going to stick with a cube. Now, um, if you, what I want you to notice is I've got interaction creation turned off. So what that means is I can actually click on, I can either just click on cube and I get a standard cube, which I believe is kind of like one unit by one unit in, in dimensions. Yeah. Um, or uh, what we can do is I can go, uh, if I go create uh, polygon primitives cube and click on here, I can actually then define things like how many, um, uh, how large the cube is in different, uh, in the different axes. So let's just make this say too high. Okay. And, uh, I could add some subdivisions to it. So let's put say two subdivisions there, or I'll put four in there, two in there, two in there. And if I click, uh, create, You'll see that it'll create me a cube. So it's created a cube, but it's given it subdivisions. So it's just a slightly different mesh to what I had before. So that option, so by clicking, and you'll see this in Maya with, with a, a lot of tools. If you go into um, the tool and you have this square next to it, that means you can actually select some options to um, uh, define that square in more detail. I'm going to go back in there. Another thing as well is quite often it's useful to reset these options. If someone's been using your computer before you, it might have uh, uh, some strange settings or you might have left it from your last project. So if you just go edit and go reset settings, okay, it resets everything back to the standard settings. And uh, that means that if I close that, rather than getting, if I create another cube, rather than getting another one of these, what I'll get is my basic cube again. Okay, so that's one way of creating it. Another way of creating a cube is I can actually go, um, let's have a look, I can actually, sorry, create polygons. I can actually select my, uh, I can actually select something called interactive creation. So if I have that turned on and I go polygon create cube here, I can then go and turn that on as well uh, up there. Okay. Um, obviously the disadvantage of using this method is I can't specify exactly how large the cube is. And um, so clearly what I can do is I can easily, if, if I was working on a visual effects project or, or an architectural project, or even in a games project, you need to keep your units consistent. Um, so one of the things you might want to do is go into uh, windows and go into your uh, main preferences uh, and then just go into settings here. And then uh, what you can do is set your units up, whether they're centimeters, millimeters or whatever. I'm going to leave it as centimeters here, but I'm just showing you where you can access that. And that's something that you would agree with your project straight up. Or perhaps that might be determined by the pipeline that you're working towards. So, for example, if you're going with Unreal or Unity, it may be that you need to go into centimeters or millimeters, depending on how that is set up. So that's something to consider. OK, so. I'm just going to stick with this cube and the focus of this tutorial is really uh, manipulating this cube in 3D. So the main manipulation tools you've got here are, are these three tools here, which is move, rotation and scale. So you've already seen me use the move tool. Now, it might be that you've got this, which is just basically your select tool that just selects an object. doesn't allow you to manipulate it. So we can select the move tool here and this obviously we can just grab the handles and move this. Uh, and obviously uh, we moving this in the axis, uh, the axis that we can move in move it in is determined by the handle that we click on. If I click on the middle, I can actually just move it in 3D space in a sort of free fall manner as well. Uh, I also have a rotation tool. So if I click on rotation, again, I can manipulate each of these handles and rotate it in uh, each axis individually. OK, or I can click this outer one here and that will allow me to kind of sorry, I can just sort of click in the middle here and it will allow me to kind of tumble it and manipulate it in, in sort of a more free fall manner. Another thing I can do is I can grab, uh, I can click on this manipulator here, which is the scale manipulator. Uh, I'm just going to rotate this to just be a little bit more logical for us to use. Right. So I can uh, then scale this again. I can scale it in each axis 
Or if I click in the middle one, I scale all the axes universally, which can be quite useful. Another thing that can be quite useful is if I want to scale two axes universally. So I want to keep one axis the same and I want to scale the other two axes universally. So if I hold, if I, um, let me just try and move to a better view here. If I hold control, um, if I hold my control button and manipulate this handle, notice how the other two uh, axes are scaling, but the one that I'm manipulating isn't scaling. Okay, so that's another way that I can scale axes uniformly if I want to. If I want to scale two axes uniformly, and that's quite a useful feature uh, to know. What I can also do is I can actually manipulate this in the channel box. So right now I've got the attributes editor up and what you want to do is click on the channel box here. If you can't see any of this, it may well be that you've got uh, you've got this icon here uh, switched off. OK, so you might want to switch that on. So switch that on and you'll see the attribute editor. OK. Um, or I think uh, the channel, sorry, the channel box is this icon here. So if you can't see this tab here, which is what you want to click on, you want to click on, you'll need to click on this icon. OK, so if you can't see the tab, click on that icon and it should come up. So this will be your channel box. If you've got the tab, then just click on that and you'll see your channel box here. So the channel box allows us to actually rather than kind of uh, manipulate um, the scale, rotation and translation like we've been doing in um, uh, in uh, uh, 3D, uh, sorry, uh, using handles, we can actually type in specific values. So if I want to get this rotation back to zero, I can just simply put zero in all of these and it'll return this back to the normal axis. And again, if I want to translate this, uh, if I want to translate this, um, uh, I can actually manually enter that as well. So I can go to and it will move it uh, accordingly. OK, and the same with the scale. Uh, one thing to be aware of with the scale is the scale is uh, scaling it relative to the original size of the box. So if I've made the box, say, um, uh, four by four by four units wide and then I scale it by two, uh, then that axis would be then eight units. OK, so it's relative to how many units there are. Um, uh, if you're trying to work to precise measurements, uh, again, if you're working in a games engine or VFX, this might be something you want to do to keep things in scale or architecture. So it's quite, you know, it's quite normal to want to try and keep things into scale. Then what you want to try and do is avoid scaling these, keep the scale here to one. And then if you want to resize the cube, then click on this inputs icon here and this will give you access to the original width, height and depth of the cube and you can actually, uh, you can then just uh, adjust that. So I can then put that back to 4x4x4 four by four by four, and I know that that is 4x4x4 four by four by four units and in this case the units are centimetres. So it's quite important when you're doing things like scale, uh, uh, to, to, if, you, if you need things to be an exact size, to perhaps avoid scaling using this and, and perhaps uh, scale using this. I, I say that once you start doing um, uh, uh, component level manipulations, i.e. manipulating parts of the object, uh, you want to avoid using this because this can cause problems um, uh, in uh, Maya. Uh, Maya can start deforming your object and doing funny things with your object. So really, this is only really to make sure you've got the correct starting point in terms of scale before you start adding lots of detail uh, to your model. Uh, one of the things I did want to mention was hotkeys. And um, so uh, what you'll find is when you're doing things like character modeling or any kind of detailed modeling, uh, especially when you start getting into component level manipulation, again, which, we, which we'll talk or manipulating parts of the mesh rather than the whole object, um, you often find that you want to move between these tools quite quickly. So um, uh, that's easy enough. You can just go. So to do the move tool, you press W. So. W will give you the move tool. Um, e will give you the rotate tool, which may seem a bit un unintuitive. And R gives you the scale tool. OK, so W for move, E for rotate and R for scale. And they're right next to each other on your QWERTY keyboard. So that will make things reasonably easy uh, to uh, to do. Um, now, the final thing I want to talk you through is something called um, your pivot. So if I rotate this, you'll notice that uh, the cube is rotating around the middle and when I scale it you'll notice that it scales around the middle and the reason for that 
is if we look at the manipulation handles, you can see that the manipulation handle always starts from the middle of the cube. And that's what we call the pivot point, or it might be called the anchor point. Okay. And uh, now this is, this is where it starts. It starts in the middle of the cube when you've created your primitive, but it doesn't have to stay there. You can move that pivot point. So for example, if you want to um, uh, animate a door, and rotate it around the edge of the door rather than the middle of the door because that's how doors work in your animation you could move the pivot point to uh, one edge of this cube to allow that to happen so um, I'll demonstrate that now so in order to move the pivot point if you hold down D you'll notice that the icon changes so I'm just going to hold down D and let it go and you'll see the icon changes and when D's held down if I move this what's happening is I'm moving this pivot point not the cube okay so let's just uh, move it to my view yeah so I've moved that pivot point to the kind of the edge of the cube and now if I go and rotate this you'll see that it rotates around that pivot point and if I scale it uh, let's just do a scale sorry you'll notice that it scales around that pivot point as well so um, that's just kind of covering your main tools for um, translating and manipulating objects